at an old episode of the TV show Sightings in which they talk about um, alleged alien abduction. So let me get this on the screen here real quick. One moment, please. Been prodded as tissue and fluid samples are taken and then returned to the point from which they were abducted, most often with little or no recollection of what happened. The one thing they know for certain is that minutes, even hours, have passed that they can't account for. This form of amnesia is known as missing time. This missing time aspect is very, very common in abduction experiences, where uh, the person cannot remember where he or she was. Bud Hopkins, best-selling author and UFO abduction investigator. It was early, fairly early, about 9 in the morning when I headed out, and it was nearly noon when I got back. And that didn't really seem to make much sense. Gene Robinson, abducted twice in childhood. I didn't feel anything. I was like, in, like I, you're just like time stops. Cindy Doherty, abducted with her mother, Judy, in 1973. And at that point, the events are blank. Jesse Law, abducted several times since 1956. Under hypnosis, we seem to find the only tool we have of getting at what is a genuine period of missing time. In recent years, hypnosis has gained wider acceptance as a reliable method to enhance memory of past events. Even police departments have used the method to help witnesses remember details of crimes. John Carpenter is a psychiatric hypnotherapist from Springfield, Missouri, who's worked with over 50 people who claim they were abducted by aliens. So they're not fantasizing or creating these stories, but they're very real people who are telling me the same almost boring details and over and over again we get these hidden consistencies in uh, abduction reports which come out through hypnosis and they match exactly the kinds of things that come out under normal recall and i don't remember stopping i don't remember pulling over and, and parking the car but it was inside the halfway in the road and halfway not and this is when i saw this the spotlight then was doing this like a beam. But once the beam of light hit me, I was paralyzed. And at that moment, that's when I was on the craft. The description of the UFO occupants are extremely similar. They were about three feet tall, maybe this high. They, their skin looked like it was made of marshmallow, white, pale color. And they had real big eyes, large, dark eyes. And they had real large, claw-like hands. So I couldn't tell if they were mittens or what. Just two nostrils or slits for a nose and a slit for a mouth they didn't walk they like glided the bottom part of their legs kind of like almost robotic the person will describe being on a table which is generally metallic uh, they uh, are unable to move and the beings were standing around me looking at me examining my body now when they're on the table they describe operations which take place the next thing i remember they have this thing in front of my eye, like a metal instrument that was kind of like shaped like an L, and stuck it, it went all the way back down to here though in my throat. As proof the operations have taken place, those who believe they were abducted often point to unexplainable scars, even implants. My mother remembers me uh, pointing out that I had a scar on my leg. Um, she said it never bled. The scar appeared simultaneously with Jesse's abduction experience at age four in 1956. Beneath the scar, Jesse could always feel a small object. Well, it was in my leg for 34 years, and I finally decided to have it removed. And this is what they took out. Though tests have revealed the object is made of silicone and trace metals, they don't answer where it came from. If it is an alien implant, one theory is that it might be a tracking device similar to those used in tagging operations for birds and other wildlife. We're looking at something which is more like what we do with wildlife. It's, it seems scientific. It seems research-oriented. It seems like there's a real important purpose behind it and not to interfere or destroy us, but in terms that we have something that perhaps they need and perhaps they're helping us in some way. In addition to the consistent and compelling nature of these abduction accounts, it's the conviction behind the stories that has impressed Dr. John Mack, a professor of psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. What is persuasive to me is that these individuals report this experience uh, as real. But it is not dream, it is not fantasy, it is uh, not delusion in my judgment. I've had every psychological test 
they have, and they all came out just fine. Inevitably, all this anecdotal evidence invited the question, why do abductions happen? The answer could be that we're part of a grand intergalactic biological experiment. Some people hypothesize that their uh, planet or where they come from is, is arid and barren and they've lost their own reproductive capabilities so they are trying to find a new genetic stock uh, with us. Perhaps we're looking at some survival process where part of our makeup is strengthening their makeup. There is very powerful evidence and it sounds crazy but it's true that they are trying to achieve some kind of blend or mix it's almost as if the missing link is knocking at our back door the stories are hard to believe however people who live thousands of miles apart and have never been in contact with each other have described their ordeals with striking similarity and reported incidents of abduction are on the rise but no government authorities have come forward to corroborate the information after this break, we'll look into what governments all over the world know about UFOs and why they've classified their information beyond top secret. And people are more afraid. And that's a quick look at um, the alleged UFO abductions, and that's the TV show sightings. It's no longer on unless it's on in reruns ones, uh, uh, nowadays, but in years past it was a, um, it was a uh, relatively informative and productive show. And that'll do it.